Today, controversial stories ripped from the headlines. I never imagined that I would have to bury any one of my kids. My two big exclusives. I can't imagine this gets any easier. Trayvon Martin's mom. Change the laws so that this does not happen to somebody else's baby. And a decade later. The worst murder spree that has ever happened here. The woman married to the DC sniper. Her never before revealed details. If I moved or he, if he knew I was awake, he would kill me. All new re Well, today's show is ripped from the headlines. We will be talking about what you're talking about. But later, I will be sitting down exclusively with an interview with two women who have been embroiled in two of the most notorious events in recent US history. First, I will talk with Trayvon Martin's mother to find out how she is doing in the aftermath of her son's tragic death. Then we'll meet the ex-wife of the infamous DC sniper. Do you remember him? Uh, who will share never before revealed details about the motivation for his rampage. But first, we have put together a smart, opinionated, and funny panel of pundits to weigh in on the stories you are all talking about, and you know you are. She is one of TV's most sought after legal analysts and a syndicated columnist, author, attorney, and advocate and friend. Please welcome Ariva Martin. His comedy show is sell out around the world, and he's been featured on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Please welcome Maz Jobrani. She is the Emmy-winning host of Style Network's Clean House and a regular contributor for Women's Day magazine. Also my friend, Trish Sir. And he is a quadruple threat. He's a doctor of clinical psychology, an educator, a singer, songwriter, musician, and on-air personality. Please welcome Dr. Gabe Crenshaw. And last, but certainly not least, she is an actress, singer, and host of Yahoo's Daytime in No Time. I was on her show. She's adorable. Nikki Boyer, come on out. All right, panel, we're going to start with a case that was just tossed out of court by a judge in Tennessee. I didn't know about this until just now. Two African-American men sued the show The Bachelor, claiming they discriminate against casting participants of color. The judge ruled that the show is covered by the First Amendment. Ariva, from a legal standpoint, how is, I mean, what, what do you make of this? You know, Ricky, we don't think about casting as being the creative part that writers engage in, but it's really, it would be easier to understand if this was the script and, you know, the creative license that writers have. And that's what this court says. When you're casting the show, you're making creative decisions. And but the it's first reality amendment, TV. We're not talking about playing it part. It's this is reality TV, though, but they still get to tell a story. And the court says the First Amendment allows them to tell whatever story they want to tell. And the fact that there may not be a lot of minorities or African Americans on the show doesn't give these two guys in Nashville the right to tell these writers and this casting agency who to put on the show. But what I hope happens from this case is that ABC, the network, says, wow, let's look at these shows and see how we can incorporate more minorities. Yep. Because minorities watch the show. Yeah, yeah they do. <laughs> Let me move on to a ne next headline. Recently at a school pep rally in New York, stu school students dressed in blackface and reenacted the Chris Brown beating of Rihanna. Yeah. Poor taste at the very least. One of the students said it's not a big deal. Okay, Dr. Gabe, you're a psychologist and an educator. Um, this is a big deal. Well, this is a very big deal, Ricky, and, and audience. First of all, it's, it's disturbing. Uh, it's not necessarily surprising to me. When you are unaware, and we're looking at high school kids who are unaware to a great degree, really, of what blackface really represents in this country. Now, the problem is, is that it's a conflict. Because when you think about Al Jolson, it wasn't the minstrel show that, we, that it came to be. Right. I mean, so you've got Al Jolson, who actually was an advocate for black people. In fact, the first African-American Broadway show happened because some black folks came to him and said, we can't get through, and he said, I'm going to push you through. So for him, it was, it, it, was, it was paying homage. But let's be clear, there's nothing funny about racism, there's nothing funny yeah, about no. sexism, or there's nothing funny about the domestic violence. Domestic, yeah, yeah. Domestic you, know, what, you know, and the point, you know, one more thing. You know, October is Domestic Violence Month. Awareness, and so, awareness. Right, awareness, right. Yeah. You know, right idea, 
wrong makeup. Right. And yeah. I just want to say that maybe they should send these seniors back to freshman history class so they can learn a little bit about the, the civil rights movement because clearly they didn't know that rule. And I just yeah. I think it would be a really good opportunity to send all, all those kids. Instead An of a pep rally, maybe go back to history class. Another point, too, is is the that who are the heroes that these kids are looking at? I mean, Chris Brown did hit her, Rihanna, which is another thing that people in the limelight got to think about before they go and do things of this sort. I, I'm, this is, again, bad That's taste true. what they did, but the fact that Chris Brown did this in the first it place. It seems to be glorifying domestic violence and glorifying yeah. the horrific, you know, incident that involved Chris Brown. Definitely yeah. poor judgment on their part. All right, next up, speaking of poor judgment, the Lohans are in the news again. Shocking, <laughs> yeah. I know. This time, Michael Lohan wants conservatorship over his troubled daughter, Lindsay. All right, Nikki, do you think that Michael's intentions in Lindsay's are good ones? No! I mean, if you watch him for five minutes, if you watched him on Celebrity Rehab, you could sort of tell he really likes the limelight. The other interesting thing is that three of Lohan's siblings have come out that normally shy away from the limelight. They've come out and said, this is not, we do not want your help, we do not need it. I find it interesting also that during the time of Britney's scandal, you never heard her dad on Entertainment Tonight or talking to other news shows, but for some, way, some reason, Michael Lohan always finds his way. It's really disturbing to the both center. parents. I mean, seeing that mom on Dr. Oh, Phil yeah. uh, basically Ooh. unraveling, yes. yeah. I, it, it, I feel for Lindsay. I mean, I don't, I don't know the well, girl. Absolutely. It's putting the fox in charge of the hen house is what mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm. Are you letting him run anything? And he's like, I don't need to run the money. Honey, she don't got no money. Y'all run her into the dang ground. Be a parent. <laughs> Be a you parent. know, I want to talk about, Ricky, though, the you know, conservative Conservatorships are really important. And so what, we, are, what does it mean, conservatorships? With, with Britney, Britney has two children. Yeah. And so what they pro proved her if to be. So, if unstable? someone's not competent, if they're incompetent, incapable of caring for themselves, making good decisions, you can go into court, you can present medical evidence that this person needs someone to take over their affairs. That's kind of the simple legal you know, form or term for what a conservatorship is. And then someone becomes a decision maker for that individual. So really good to use when you have a person with severe mental illness or you know someone that really cannot make good decisions. I don't know if this case, you know, even if it got into court, this dad, right. he's the last person that a judge <laughs> would give control but over But he's saying anyone. he doesn't even want to be the one to take over. Even he wants someone it, to take over. Even violent, I think the judge, before he gets to the door, is going to say, how, you know, out of here, buddy. How is, who how are is, you? How is this dad stayed out of jail? That's my he's question. He's been in and out of jail. Out of jail. <laughs> don't we have a three-strike rule? Shouldn't he be gone? Uh, yeah, I'm I sure think you do. In this it state, keeps showing anyway, up again. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. I'm going to take a quick break. We're going to have more with our panel. Up next, we're going to set our sights on the lighter side of nudes right after this. Coming up, California woman has admitted to breastfeeding her dog. Before, we think it's completely crazy. 18th, 19th century, it was very commonplace for women to breastfeed animals and the other way around as well.